domestic violence, suicidal tendencies. Are you being stressed out from these problems? Call the national hotline at 422-2763 or 322-2763. There are trained social workers available 24 hours to help you. Know that you are not alone in this. The ZNS Community page now has its own home on Channel 230. Be sure to tune into this channel to see informative notices, funeral announcements, birthday greetings, and much, much more. So watch the ZNS Community channel today on Cable 230. Colon cancer is the third most common cancer affecting Bahamians. Your risk of developing colon cancer is increased if you have a personal history of colorectal cancer or colon polyps, a family history of colon cancer, or inflammatory bowel diseases such as ulcerative colitis. Other factors that can increase your risk of developing colon cancer are low fiber, high fat diets, a sedentary lifestyle, obesity, smoking, and alcohol. You can take steps to reduce your risk of colon cancer by making specific lifestyle changes. Eat a variety of fruits, vegetables, and whole grains. These foods contain fiber, minerals, vitamins, and antioxidants, which may play a role in cancer prevention. Drink alcohol in moderation or not at all. Do not smoke. Exercise with a goal of getting in at least 30 minutes each day. If you've been inactive, start slowly and gradually build up to 30 minutes. Also, talk to your doctor before starting any exercise program. Maintain a healthy weight. If you're at a healthy weight, maintain it by combining a well-balanced diet with daily exercise. If you need to lose weight, ask your doctor about healthy ways to achieve your goal. Colon cancer screening can also help to prevent colon cancer or lead to its early detection when treatment is most effective. If you're 45 years or older, speak to your doctor about having a colonoscopy or some form of colon cancer screening that may be appropriate for you. I'm Dr. Eugene Marcus Cooper. Pay attention to your health. Get the facts and discuss colon cancer with your physician today. This message is brought to you by the Ministry of Health in partnership with the Public Hospitals Authority. While it's encouraging that the national COVID-19 vaccine rollout is going successfully, it's not the only precaution to reduce the spread of the virus in our communities. It's important to continue practicing safety protocols because it is our social responsibility to protect ourselves and to protect others. Wash your hands for a friend with a weaker immune system. Only read and share information from trusted sources to avoid unnecessary panic. I'm gonna need y'all to avoid these large crowds. We could have loved ones at home who have underlying health conditions. Do it. Practicing safety protocols is an act of brotherly and sisterly love. The life you save may just be yours as well as your neighbor. Together, Together we, will win. we will win. We will win. Transformation. It's best to be a winner. It's best to be a winner. Being awake, you are a 
unit. You more than as one. So why are you doing what you do? The Ministry of National Security and the ZNS Network presents Shock Treatment. A whole new season coming soon. Ordinary People is back with a new season. Join us on the ZNS Network. Anybody drugs the most? Not New York's bestsellers, the hood's bestseller. <laughs> <laughs> I like that. Coming soon. People are only going to say yes or no. And if they say no, keep on trying until you get a yes. Ordinary People. As long as we've been a country, these islands have been a favorite for royalty. And for as long as the royals have adored us as a people, we've always been hospitable and gracious hosts. From a colony to a nation, now on the cusps of its golden anniversary, these shores have celebrated royal visits with class and dignity that is wholly Bahamian. As Her Majesty Queen Elizabeth celebrates her platinum anniversary on the throne, the islands of the Bahamas welcomes the Duke and Duchess of Cambridge on this, their first visit to the country. Our coverage starts Thursday, March 24 at 4 p.m. and continues through their departure Saturday, March 26. The ZNS Network, your home for the royal visit, William and Kate. Watching the ZNS Network, the People Station. It's historic, it's new, it's informative, it's educational, it's exciting, and yes, you are a part of it. Good morning and welcome to Direct Talk, a two-hour talk show on the biggest network in the country. Broadcasting live from our studios here in the capital city of Nassau, that's 1540 AM and 104.5 FM. We are also live in Freeport, Grand Bahama, that's 810 on your radio dial, and we are live on Television 13. Or you can join us on any of our social media platforms, that's Facebook, Facebook Instagram or Twitter. Just go to the ZNS official page and join us on Facebook. For only the sun covers the Bahamas and the Turks and Caicos better than ZNS. I'd like to welcome many of you to the second half of the doubleheader. As you would have been tuning to the first half, where my good friend Spence Phillison had as his guest Mr. Andrew Burroughs, the Deputy General Manager of Television here at the Broadcasting Corporation, and Reverend Dr. Philip McPhee. They were talking about regatta and the national sport of the Bahamas. And he was joined later by the Executive Chairman of the Broadcasting Corporation, Mr. Picewell Forbes, former Member of Parliament for South Andres. And then he had Mrs. Titanai Tuni of Social Media Marketing. She did the second segment. Today, we have two segments. As we talk about the new dreamers of Nassau, I've got a Dr. Charlene C. Wallace, founder and CEO of Family Eye Care Center in the first segment. We're going to be talking about celebrating Glaucoma Awareness Week. In the second segment, i got a new, another new dreamer, Dr. Jacqueline Penn Knowles. She has a clinic, um, general medicine and reproductive. We're going to talk to her for an hour about her practice and the wonderful work she's doing here in the capital city as these new and upcoming doctors yeah. uh, now being with it. Yeah. Um, we got to know where you could go to get these services because they got to make sure we could see Dr. McPhee. Yeah, well, uh, 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 they, they're making all the money now. That's all right. Don't forget that. You, you're looking for sponsorship for a Yeah. Um, I come under them soon. I've invited uh, Reverend Dr. Um, Philip McPhee, uh, the pastor of Mount Calvary Baptist Church located on Blue Hill Road. Welcome back to Direct Talk and welcome back to the second segment of today. Thank you, sir. It's always a pleasure to come in here because you, you light up the world. <laughs> I, I didn't know you grew up Baptist. I was born Baptist. You serious? And I will die Baptist. 
When you say you were born Baptist, what do you mean? I was born in a Baptist church. Yeah? Yeah. And mommy gave birth? Right in the church. The first seat after you come to the side door. Wow. You, you come out singing? I hear preaching. <laughs> <laughs> what a fellowship. What a joy do I. Leaning on. Everlasting God. What a blessedness. Say, what a peace. It's mine. It's mine. Leaning on. The everlasting God. Got to come and worship with you. We're going to have you back on Tuesday of next week. Yes, I'll be back Tuesday at 12, eh? Yeah, I'm invited. Uh, we're going to talk a little bit about Andros. Mango of Key Regatta. Mango of Key Regatta, where it all started. Yeah. Uh, and the daytime tour of that wonderful regatta is May 5th to the 8th. That's right. But we're also going to talk about the other islands regatta that's oh, yes. coming up. Oh, yes. I'm going to give you the whole booklet. Okay. That you would consume so you'll be able to talk with basically all of the chairmen and... Uh, the people were putting their regattas together. It's regatta time in the Bahamas. Yeah. The Bahamas is really being um, blessed by water. Therefore, we should utilize it. Yes. To to the bring the most beautiful waters in the world and yes. to bring economic benefits to the various islands. Yes. What regatta does in four days, the government can do in a couple of years. When the first Bimini regatta came to Bimini yes. in 1997, I'll never forget it. <laughs> Headed up by you. Yes. Um, when taxi drivers say he'd made so much money in those three days, he got to go home for the next month. That is so true. And then my good friend Duda said he had to go home to rest his eyes. That's yes. the most beautiful ladies he ever see <laughs> in that wonderful weekend. <laughs> well, that is so true. <laughs> and, you know, I was blessed one time when I was in Andrews, and the lady c came to me at the con con conclusion of the and all Andrews regard. She said, Dr. Murphy, I'm so thankful you brought this regard here. I am now able to go and pay my child's uh, university wow. uh, bills. Yes. That, yeah. meant, that touched me. The economic benefit. Very much. Of regardless so. of these families. Yes, is yes, yes. And I can thank you for your faithfulness. You know, you, you've you been around. Yeah. Every every political organist, every every government, hallelujah, yeah. brings you in. Oh, yeah. When you have something to offer. Can I get amen? Hallelujah. And we're behemoths. Yes. We always tell all people, of we are know, one. Yeah. All of we are one. And I'm happy for you, too, you know, because you and I lost the same time. Yeah, absolutely. You, we didn't cry like the former, like the governor general, <laughs> C.A. Smith. Uh, we didn't cry. No, we, no, we, we pack out. our bundle and, <laughs> <laughs> and we went home. I told him, Obi, Obi, I, Hercules, was come beat me by 287 votes. All I could say was, count it again, man. Count, count it again. again. Well, you did a good job on the count it oh. again. <laughs> I made mean, a minister's salary to count it again. We got well, I got my own too. Oh, yeah. Yes, got yes. I got mine from, who, who, who put it on me? I got to forget. <laughs> Bradley Roberts. Oh, yeah. He <laughs> being in the oh, yeah. Yeah, he, he likes to kill me in being in God's star. <laughs> but that is the democratic process. That's the democratic and process. And we got to have the right to choose. Yes. And that, that is good. It's healthy. Yes. In our country. Yeah. I'm going to invite you to invoke divine guidance as we begin the show today. Thank you so much. Oh, God, our Father. Thou who created all things and said it was beautiful. Thank you for pu putting into the sky the dazzling stars, yes. the bright and glowing moon, and indeed the sunshine. We thank you for bringing us yet another day in whom in which we are so glad. We pray this hour for our nation the leadership of our land, uh, Governor General and family, our Prime Minister and his family, the leader of the opposition and his family. We pray for the Christian church, yes. for the strength and guidance that you allow them to do in making sure this nation remember the goodness of an almighty God. Mm -hmm. Remember those who have lost loved ones, especially those lately shooting and hurting one another. We pray for peace and love among us. Now, Lord, we pray blessing on this very special program, upon these who have come to give of their strength and knowledge, their vocation to make the Bahamas a better place to live. Now, Lord, bless he who leads this program. Thank you for his fellowship, his unctionizing of talent, towards this world and indeed the Bahamas. Bless him, Father. Keep your arms around him. Cover him and protect him that he will continue to do a great work with, within our land. Bless that and ask. Bless those who will carry on the great work of producing and telling the story that all of us 
must learn, now Lord, keep us in perfect peace, whose minds are stayed on you. In the wonderful name of Jesus Christ, we pray. Amen. 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 Thank you very much, as always, for Thank you. gracing us uh, and accepting the invitation whenever you invited. Yes, sir. Today, we're going to be talking about glaucoma, um, the thief of sight. Uh, I've invited Dr. Charlene Wallace, the founder and CEO of the Family Eye Center. Um, accompanying her today is Nurse Italia Gordon, president of the Bahamas Society of Ophthalmic. Now you can talk highly. You? Ophthalmic. Ophthalmic nurses. Um, so good morning, um, Nurse Italia Gordon. Wait, yes, please. Good morning. Welcome to Direct Talk. Good morning. Talk. Thank you. Tell us a little bit about this beautiful nurse. Where, where she born and where she grew up? <laughs> Quickly, so the public would know who you are. Um, like you can sit back. Mr. Wallace said, I'm the president of the Bahamas Society of Ophthalmic Nurses. I was born right here in Nassau, Bahamas. My mother and father, I guess, they knew what they were doing when they birded me. <laughs> but as it relates to family rearing, I owe it all to my extended family. And the person you see here today is all because of them and the fear of God that they had instructed and placed into my life at a very early age. Yeah, which church you go to? I visit actually at Bahamas Alves Mario Moxie. Oh, okay. Uh, that's good. Thank you for, and she called me to talk about this glaucoma. Uh, we'll talk about this glaucoma awareness week. Dr. Charlene C. Wallace, founder, welcome to Direct Talk. Good morning. Tell it's a pleasure to be here. Yes, tell us a little bit about this beautiful Wallace lady, where she was born, where she descended from, and where she grew up. Well, I actually was born in Nassau, Bahamas, grew up here in Nassau. Um, you're asking me about my Wallace heritage, and unfortunately, I really can't um, enlighten you much about that because I'm not aware of a whole lot of that. That's all right. We'll find um, it for you. Yeah, I, I, if you ask me anything about the uh, my maternal side of the history, that's, that's yes, the, I can, I can, I can talk, give you all of that. That's that's what make the union, you know. So yes, of course, of course, of <laughs> course. Who's, who's your mother and father? Um, my mother is Angela McCartney Wallace, mm -hmm. and my father is Charles Wallace. Okay. And so the, I descend from Eleuthera. Mummy on mummy's side. Actually, it's interesting. On mummy's side, mummy's my mother's parents, both mother and father, are from Topham Bay, Eleuthera, okay. and wow. my father's mother is from James Sister Eleuthera. Okay. What was your mother's maiden name? McCartney. Okay. Uh, where did you go to school? Um, high school. I went. I went to. Woods Rogers Primary School, and then I went to St. Augustine's College as my high school. Okay. And then I went to COB and graduated from COB and proceeded on to... Associate. Go, you got your associate I up. got my associates in um, biology at COB okay. and then proceeded to, you, um, to Concordia University in Montreal. So you speak a little French? Unf uh, no parlez-vous français. <laughs> <laughs> That's it. <laughs> and um, proceeded to go to New England College of Optometry to get my doctor of optometry after Concordia University. And then you would have come back home. Then I would have come back home. Yeah, and um, founded this family I said, or you started working for someone first? No, I actually worked out of uh, the office of Dr. Jonathan Rogers for a year. Um, also, at that time, it, I went, I worked for um, the Princess Margaret Hospital. In fact, I have been at the Princess Margaret Hospital as the optometrist there for the past 32 years. Oh, say what? Well, look at day over 25. Hey, <laughs> thanks be to God. Amen, to God be the glory. Yeah, that's, when, you know, blessings of God and some good genes that I've, I can be grateful for that. What made you study optometry? I always wanted to be a doctor. Mm -hmm. always wanted to be able to help others. There were persons in my life who were very close to me that had eye conditions and anomalies that were not able to be corrected surgically, and so that became a greater impetus for me to go into the area of optometry. Today we're talking about glaucoma. We are. The teeth of sight. Let's talk about glaucoma. Glaucoma really is 
it's the second leading cause of blindness in the world. Um, the most popular form of glaucoma. Glaucoma comes in more than one form, and it is a disease that is inherent to the eye itself. So it's a disease that you're really going to find just localized to the eye. Hereditary? From there is a hereditary factor to one form of it, okay. but that's only one of the risk factors. Okay. You, there are several forms of glaucoma, but the one, there's either the closed angle glaucoma, which is very painful, um, that will have symptoms, but that does not happen very often. The most, the more, more common form of glaucoma is open angle glaucoma. That's the one that there are no symptoms, there are no signs, there are no indications that, um, that you have the, condition, the disease at all. That is where, why it is important that you do have regular eye examinations. Now people are going to ask, what is regular? Once a year. It is important that you have an annual eye examination. That is the only way that that disease gets detected. Really? Yeah, yes. Okay. Well, even, whether it's early or late. But yeah. what happens if it's late is you find that you've been losing some of your peripheral vision and you're not, you're not even sure that was happened because you find yourself as opposed to reaching to your left or right um, to obtain an object that you could see in your periphery, you may find that you actually turn your entire body to the left or right. Now, not knowing why that happens, but just knowing that you do it as a compensation. Yes. Um, it is, glaucoma is coined as the sneak thief of vision because it is painless. There, like I said, there are no signs, no symptoms. There's nothing to indicate to you that the pressure in your eyes are elevated. No indication that you have been losing your peripheral vision. It only, it's only determined once you come in to have your eyes examined. So a comprehensive eye examination is important. Not an eye screening, nowhere where you go to read an eye chart. That's not going to tell you anything. No, I'll tell you what's that. With these letters that are big and then it gets a little small and a little smaller. That's, that's, not a, that's not an eye exam. Mm -hmm. Oh, no, sir. Not by any means. It's, that's only even a part of an eye screening. But an eye examination is going to be able to involve the, um, checking out for what your acuity is, that is, what your vision is far away and up close how your eyes work together, how the muscles work together, whether you're able to see color, whether you're able to perceive depth, um, the health of your eyes, the internal aspect of it, and what we call the anterior chamber, as well as what the back of your eyes look like. Now that's the part most people don't like. They don't like when you come to have an eye examination and we have to put drops in and they want to know why we have to put drops in. Well, I have a simple analogy that would help in that regard. If we don't put drops in, we have instruments that we can, yes, peek into your eyes. But that's peeking into your eyes. My analogy to that is, what happens when you peek through a keyhole? You see certain images, you peek through a keyhole. Uh, very, very limited to what you now, can see. Now, when you open the door, it's a bit <laughs> all of a sudden it's, oh, uh -oh. a whole different picture. Yes. That's what the drops do. Okay. Putting in those drops to open up the pupil is analogous to opening the door so that we can be able to evaluate the health status of the eye properly. We could see what's in the back there properly. And so persons who come in to have these tests, you think should do it at least once a year? At least, well. And this is at a certain age or as early as, early as can be? Well, look at it like this. You have one pair of eyes. We can transplant them. We can't replace them. I would think it's most important to take care of them, yes. to preserve them as best as you can. Your eyes are the window to the world. But for us as physicians, they are the window to your body because we get to be able to examine them, look in the back there, and be able to, we can, we can diagnose whether it's glaucoma, whether it's high blood pressure, diabetes, um, Many diseases we're able to detect in the eyes. and diagnose by being able to look at look in the back of the eyes because you could see it in its natural form without doing any cutting. Mm -hmm. Nurse Italia Gordon, talk about the role that the nurses play in assisting doctor persons like Doctor Wallace. Um, basically, the nurse ophthalmic specialist mm -hmm. 
we would usually be the ones to screen persons initially. And we can actually see certain red flags as it relates to persons who might have come in with just symptoms stating that, well, I can't see far or I can't see near. And so what Dr. Wallace was talking about with the visual acuity screening, we would do that part of it. And once we have done that part of it and we have seen that they're not able to see at a certain distance, then we can make the recommended um, information to those persons who need to be screened further because we won't be able to look at the back of the eye like Dr. Wallace and the other optometrists would have been able to do that. But we would be able to sense any red flags, any type of abnormalities, and actually we would be able to be the first person that they would see and be able to get that immediate um, action so that it wouldn't deteriorate further. Persons, when they hear about doctors, sometimes they're reluctant to go. So when we talk to them, we advise them, and we let them know the importance, it's like a cohesive effect where they would actually be able to say, yes, well, I understand what the nurse is saying, and then if the doctor is going to help me further, then we make their job a little easier. Yes. But actually, community screening is the basic thing that the Bahama Society emphasizes. A lot of persons don't come to the doctor, like Dr. Waz would tell you, they are scared for some reason. I don't know why. They, they wait too late. Yeah. And so time as they go to the doctor. Yes. Yes. Time as they go to the doctor, it's like too late, like you say. But we actually go out in the community and we actually screen them. And so we're able to bring them in at a quicker pace as opposed to waiting on them to come to the clinic. We go to them. And so they feel comfortable. And once you make a patient feel comfortable and they're able to talk to you, then you get a history from them. Then you realize, oh, your grandmother had glaucoma, or you had cataract in your family. Then we're able to analyze a lot of things based on their history and be able to give them the, ne the recommended um, persons that they need to go to. So I guess once we have done our initial screening and we, got, we get the history from them, we build a report. And so once we build that report, we are able to analyze and you know, refer them. A lot of persons, like I say, they don't like to go to the hospital. They don't like to come to doctors. And so we're like the mediators, we're the advocates. And we're the first line of defense as it relates to getting them in the system to get their eyes analyzed. Doc, tell me about the system as it relates to what do you go through when someone comes into your clinic for you to assist them in being able to diagnose them? Like um, Nurse Gordon said, it is the, what the ophthalmic nurses do is very important and it's instrumental. Unfortunately, they cannot get to everybody. And so we have to take responsibility for our own health care and our eye care. So what happens is someone who comes in for an evaluation, the most important thing, we have to take a history. Yeah. History is, is vital. It, it gives so much information if you take a, a thorough history. So the history is taken. Um, questions are asked whether there is any history of any eye diseases by them to themselves or those persons in their family. Sometimes they know. Sometimes they may know. Oh my! Oh, I, I remember seeing my Grammy taking drops in her eyes all the time. That too is an indicator. So it is that we take a good history. Then it is going through the testing procedure to be able to evaluate their vision to see how well they can see in the distance, how well they see up close, how well the eye muscles work how well their eyes work together, then to be able to determine whether there is a prescription that they do need to be able to assist them to see better far away or up close or far away and up close, depending on what their age is and what their need is. Okay. And of course, then to be able to assess the pressure in their eye, but that's because we do the evaluation of the anterior segment of the eye. So that initial work is done, the pressure of the eyes is, is taken, and then also drops are put in so that the pupils are open and we can be able to evaluate the health of the back of the eyes. What should the pressure of the eye be? Normal pressure should be at its highest about 21. No, no higher than that. If we see 22, we start to get very concerned. We see 23, we're going to go ahead and do multiple tests and then be able to, to start to treat. The thing is, we do a number of testing when it is that we are concerned or suspicious that somebody um, is does have glaucoma because glaucoma cannot be cured. 
the most common form, the open ankle glaucoma cannot be cured. It can only be treated. Therefore, when you are on treatment, you are actually on treatment for, your, for the rest of your life. For life. Mm -hmm. So we don't take that very lightly. And it is important that all the various testing is done prior to prescribing medication. Because when you start medication, it's for the rest of your life. Now, there are different families of medication, certain medications you are going to give initially, certain medications you will prescribe because you want to preserve the nerve head and certain, you know, lowering the pressure ultimately is what you want, but you want preservation of the structures of the eye itself as well. And so there are certain families of medication that you will use initially depending on what the level of that pressure is. Okay, so that's, that's an important thing. There's testing that's going to be done because um, once we do the tests of your, your eye examination, we see certain flags, we see certain elevations in pressure, we see the sizes of the nerve head, um, the shape of those nerve heads, all of that becomes in indications for us as to what type of testing we need to do further, whether it's a visual field, whether it's an OCT, all of that becomes important. When we come back, we're going to talk about the cost because I tell persons there's no cost for your eyes. Nothing can replace your eyes. So whatever it costs, we got to find a way to treat it. That's uh, important. But what would a test like that? We'll talk about it when we come back. Okay. We also have uh, Mr. Tyrone Johnson from the Bluff. I asked him if the Bluff, he's a he loser. He said, no, the Bluff can't have it. <laughs> uh, he's, he works in the adolescent health care. Been there for 21 years, mm -hmm. but in, sometime in 1997, he went blind. So he's going to be a testimonial we're going to end with. And that's him. the risk. That's the risk. That is why we are so diligent um, and, and why we insist so much with the saying, please come and have your regular eye examinations, even if you are... I'm, book, I'm going to book mine with you today. <laughs> It'll be my pleasure to take oh, care of you, sir. Absolutely. But it's even when you've been diagnosed and you're on medication, you still have to come in for regular examinations because just as you didn't know that your pressure was elevated, yes. you're not going to know that it, be, that it got lowered. Yeah. And we then have to determine whether it's low enough to preserve your vision um, and so that you can still maintain as much of your vision as possible. I have a good eye doctor who's been treating my wife. She's lost sight in her, one of her eyes. Okay. Uh, again, it was, uh, I, I couldn't say exactly, but I know she's diabetic as well. And so we're going to come back and talk about some of these diseases, if, yes. how it affects your eyes. We can open the phone lines, 325-5404 okay. or 5, in case anyone have any questions as it relates to their eyes and, and any information that you could give them yes, over sir. the next half of an hour. We're going to ask for a station break. When we come back, you guys send your shout out. You turn the direct <laughs> talk. I'm your host, David G. <laughs> on the road and we want you to join us for live coverage from Bahamar on March 25th at 7 and 11 p.m. for a special edition of the Bahamas Tonight, The Royal Visit. Influenza, or the flu as it is commonly called, is a viral illness that usually occurs between the months October to March. The virus is transmitted from person to person through coughing, sneezing, or talking. Symptoms include fever, cough, headache, runny nose, generalized body aches, and fatigue. There is no specific treatment for the flu, and the symptoms usually dissipate after three to seven days. Because it is caused by a virus, antibiotics are not used to treat the flu. 
Persons are encouraged to rest and drink lots of fluids. Panadol is recommended for fever and body aches associated with the flu. However, aspirin should be avoided due to the risk of bleeding. To decrease the spread of flu, persons are encouraged to get their flu shot annually and practice good cough hygiene. Additional information can be provided by your community clinic or the Health Education Division at the Ministry of Health. This message is brought to you by the Ministry of Health in partnership with the Public Hospitals Authority. to Direct Talk. I'm your host, David G., here in the capital city of Nassau. Getting ready to fly home to Grand Bahama this afternoon. Bahama's a 430 flight. Um, got to go home. Got to do the show out of Freeport on Thursday. There will be no show on Friday because of the royal visit. Um, uh, yes. So joining me yes. tomorrow uh, in the first segment, we're going to be remembering the sea safe lanes. We're going to be talking with Moni Gleary and Clarence Wallace and one or two other bowlers. Um, Clarence used to bowl probably when the bowling alley first was at the Jack Tar Hotel. That was way back. Had to have been in the 50s and the 60s when the Jack Tar was built. So we had bowling in Grand Bahama mm -hmm. from way back then. Uh, the Sea Safe Lanes is presently closed, but we're going to talk about the days of the Monday night with a set and the Tuesday night mixers and the Wednesday morning coffee league and the Wednesday night early bird and the Thursday night businessman. Only men. We couldn't let Monique Leary them come into that league. We, they won't come. But no, it's for biz, for men only. And then we can talk about some of the tournaments they would have attended over the last 50 years. I think Clarence has been going to ABC for about 50 years consecutively. Uh, every year, oh, Easter, he God. goes to the ABC tournament. Uh, and, and so we're going to do them in the first segment. And then in the second segment, we're going to be remembering the life and the legacy of the late Alveston Edwards. Um, we're going to talk to for his beautiful children. L great legacy. His father built the Adastra Gardens here mm. in Nassau. Came from Jamaica. And he went to school in Jamaica, came back as a carpenter and excellent work. Next week, Monday, remembering the life of the late Tony Seymour. I've got to have his kids in. Uh, Tony Seymour Jr. and his daughter, Sophie Seymour. We're going to talk to them about this legendary father who sang, Pretty Blue Eyes, Please Come Out Tonight. Y'all don't know nothing about that. Now, really? me, and you, me and you know about it. <laughs> uh, we, we got this nice loss. <laughs> nice garden, they know what we're talking about. <laughs> On Tuesday, we're going to be doing two segments. The Cancer Treatment Center of America. Miss um, Teeny Lightburn is going to join us, the managing director, and Lakeisha Morley. And uh, 12 o'clock, Mangrove Key Regatta. We're going to be talking to David Rowell and Reverend Dr. Philip McPhee. And then on Wednesday, we've invited Dr. Peter Maynard, a uh, noted attorney. We're going to talk about the war between Russia and U Ukraine and talk about the effect that it will have on us. Let's understand why these two countries are at war. Growing up, we heard about World War I and World War II. We weren't there, but we are part of this um, Korean uh, the Russian and Ukraine war. And then on Thursday, we're going to talk about the first school in the city of Freeport. It was called the Freeport School. Now it's called St. Paul's Methodist okay. College. That was the first school built in the city. We're going to talk to uh, Ms. Sophia Howden and some of the old scholars of that institution. And then on Friday, 
the story of Russell Town. You know, we got the settlement in right opposite uh, uh, on the southern shore. Some people call it Williamstown, but the people there divided. A portion of it is Williamstown, and a portion is Russell Town. You can't tell the people from Russell Town they from Williamstown, and you can't tell the people from Williamstown they from Russell Town. And so we got a gentleman, Mr. Edison Anthony Russell, 82 years old. He's going to tell the story of Russell Town, and then the following week we're going to be working on some stories for you. One of them is remembering the life and legacy of Bishop Michael Hartley Eldon. We're going to talk about this first Bahamian bishop in an independent Bahamas. We're talking about glaucoma. Uh, talking with Dr. Charlene Wallace. Father is none other than the historical saxophonist, eh? Uh, yes, that's correct. Charles, Charles Wallace. Charles R. Wallace, yes. Uh, he came from Eleuthera. One of the brothers, I'm told, went to Eleuthera. One went to Grand Bahama. One came to Nassau and one went to Andrus, but they all came out of Ragged Island. So we got to tr trace <laughs> Charles. <laughs> trace that history. Charles's right? parents, his father and his grandfather okay. and his great grand. And we can tie it into Ragged Island so you can go back to Ragged Island for the next <laughs> one coming. Okay. You got to go look for. I got to look for my roots. Yeah, they got to look for no land. Just yeah. go to Farris. <laughs> you don't carry no land when you go. I know people who are looking for land. During the break, we were talking about the challenges. Um, the government offices would have with providing all of these services that the public needs? The eye care center at the, um, that the government has, that the hospital has, it okay. really services, it's the only public eye care facility mm -hmm. in the country. So really, we do have persons coming in from the family island that need service as well. And so, despite the fact of persons feeling entitled to automatically come and present themselves and try to make an appointment, it is referral-based, and many times the appointments are spaced out and longer than they would desire. And so, it is incumbent upon persons to also find a way to ensure that they take care of their visual needs. Yes. You know, sometimes it is that for the things that we want and that are important to us, you know, we know how to pinch a penny here, mm -hmm. put a save for a rainy day, mm -hmm. put a couple of dollars aside, we join know, the ASU. We know how to buy them weave. <laughs> and we know how to buy the, those Gucci. Our priorities yes. sometimes get a little bit warped, but you, we also know the things that we really, really want. Yes. Mm -hmm. We find a way to ensure that we're able to go ahead and, and right. a accomplish that. And so one of the things that becomes important with your, your health care, your eye care, like I say, your eyes cannot be replaced. We can't transplant them. Um, we, we preventative care is the way to go. Absolutely. And so it means that sometimes you have to sacrifice, Well, but you're sacrificing for your own benefit. Amen. Mm -hmm. And so... It means that sometimes, you know, you just got to put something aside and eventually get to the point that something you... Something aside, you got to go get it to deal with your eyes. Well, it well, has to be a priority. It has to be, because mm -hmm. pro procrastination is still the thief of time. It is. Mm -hmm. Tomorrow never comes. When tomorrow comes, we call it today. Mm -hmm. um, nice to tell you, tell us, who all make up a part of this community screening? Who are, who are some of the persons in the, that department? Personally, myself, okay. the president, the vice president is Sakita Meadows. Mm -hmm. She is a nurse deployed at the public hospital um, the eye theater. Mm -hmm. The secretary is also nurse Gaynell Bonnaby. She's also deployed at the hospital's eye theater. Okay. The treasurer is based in Freeport. Okay. She was employed at the RAN. And the chaplain is also employed at the RAN. Her name is Cheryl Bean. The trustee is Nurse Rochelle Simonet. She is also a community eye specialist nurse. Mm -hmm. And our advisors include Nurse Donaldson. She is also deployed in the surveillance unit. And Nurse Rolene Lewis, she's an advisor on the board. And she's actually at the eye care center, also at the eye theater. Okay. Our facilitator, who is also a part of the board. She's a sergeant at arms. Her name is Dr. Audrey Lightburn. Okay. She facilitated the classroom in 2019. She's a retired eye nurse, and she has played an instrumental part of bringing us together to formulate this society. And really, she has been the person to give us the inspiration to go out there and help the community. 
the board of directors were elected. And so we have a small group of other ophthalmic trained nurses and allied health workers who are also instrumental in helping us as we work along with other NGOs like Rotary Club, where we actually facilitate the children getting free glasses. Okay. And then we have the Lions Club also. Oh, they're bigger than Freeport. Yes. Lions yeah. Club is big on eyesight in Grand Bahama. And we did a initiative with them in Elutra last year. Okay. Where they actually gave free glasses to the children in Roxanne. Okay. So we go to the family islands. We try our best. Like I said, we're a small NGO just coming up. And hopefully we'll get more stakeholders to come on board like Dr. Wallace also. Absolutely. So that when we refer them to her, then we know for sure she knows that we would have done the necessary um, diagnostic screenings. Pre for pre-screening? Yes, pre-screening. Before we go to the final break, you guys send a shout out. When we come back, we can ask Dr. Wallace. Gotta get some numbers for you. Some people are texting me wanting to know how they could find you and uh, utilize your services. We are talking about one or two other doctors who can offer the same services you offer because yes. the government cannot do it all. It's, I, I often say the government services are for those unfortunate and those less fortunate. Um, those who of us who could afford to pay or to pay for the services that we could get. The government cannot take care of everybody. Mm -hmm. it, it, and so there are those of us who find it um, in our portfolios to not only work here in New Providence, but actually render services in some of the family islands Absolutely. to be able to to make it easier so family islanders really don't have to go through as much of the traveling. Sometimes it's it's a little bit more challenging for them to understand the the sacrifice that is being made, yes. but it's one where there are many of us that, that try to do that. And that's the beauty of the Bahamas, is us and these family islands. Yes. Mm -hmm. Shout out before you go. Yes, I'd like to give a shout out to my cousin Ebony, who's celebrating her birthday today. What's Ebony's yeah. last name? Ebony Bullard. Okay. She's actually, she's a nurse also. Okay. And I really want to wish her a prosperous and beautiful birthday today. Tell Ebony we come for our cake, and Christians don't eat, um, <laughs> Christians don't drink rum no more. We now eat it in the cake. <laughs> Christian favorite cake is rum cake. We take a session break. When we come back, joining us is going to be Mr. Tyrone Johnson. He's a, it's a testimonial of what happened to him. Who procrast probably would have procrastinated and didn't realize his sight was leaving him. You're tuning tune to Direct Talk. I'm your host, David G. Music producer and recording artist Katya joins us next time on Journey TV. Katya shares her journey of healing and self-discovery, which gave her the tools to thrive through anxiety and the courage to share her music with the world. Don't you miss this inspiring story. Tune in Thursdays at 8 p.m. on ZNS. Journey TV, we share life's truths. Really, each team member must do his or her part in the race. If one member drops the baton, it impacts all of us. Across all ages, genders, abilities, nationalities, cultures, or religion, we are all on the same team. And we all have a role to play in getting to the finish line to win the race against COVID-19. Don't drop the baton on safety. Wear your mask over your mouth and nose. Keep at least three feet distance from others. Do not touch your face and wash or sanitize your hands often. Together, we will win. You want gang bang? It's back. You're here because your parents decided to put you in here. The groundbreaking reality series returns. You never shown before? Louisiana hit me. Do you know it's still time to get it together? Uh, uh, with never before seen footage. Come punch me then. Send you punch him on me. You punch me? Move! This ain't no playground. You're gonna know before you leave today. If you leave, the day find some space, I can teach y'all how to disrespect. It's a whole new season. Don't come here with your movie face, because I ain't buying it. Watch their transformation. It's best to be a winner! It's best to be a winner. Being white, you are a unit. You more than as one. So why are you doing what you do? The Ministry of National Security and the ZNS Network presents Shark Treatment. A whole new season coming soon.
welcome back to Direct Talk. I'm your host, David G. Having a wonderful conversation uh, about the real challenges that some people have as it relates to glaucoma. Yes. Um, and I was saying to Mr. Tywin Johnson as he came in, he's a testimony that others could hear um, that it's important that they get their eyes checked. It but is. during the break, you were talking, Doc, about some of the islands you would have served. Where, where have you spent some time in the family islands? Yes, I have... Um Worked, I worked in Governor's Harbor for 22 years, okay. Harbor Island for 19 years, um, Abaco for five. During the recession, it cost everything to yes. go on a hold yes. and had to reconsider. Um, since then, I'm, I've been back in Harbor Island, um, started last year again, and with the consideration of, of an, another couple islands, possibly. That's great. So, Tyron Johnson, uh, yes. welcome to Direct Talk. Good morning, and, and uh, thank you for the opportunity to share. Uh, tell us a little bit about this handsome fellow from the bluff. You don't show Island. No, no, no. Can I? <laughs> Definitely it's not bluff. I, not that I have anything against bluff, can I? I, I was there several times. I enjoyed it. But uh, my, my mother is actually um, born, was born in bluff, can I? My father was born in New Bight. What, uh, what was your mother's name? My mother's name, uh, God rest her soul, was Hester Bernice Marshall Johnson, okay. but she was actually relative to Mackenzie okay. in the Bluff Kid Island. Okay. My father is Cedric L. Johnson from the Bight Kid Island. Okay. So you would have grown up in, in the Bight? Mm, Bluff more. Than okay. Yeah. Okay. You went to school there? Um, no, came to Nassau. At what age? Went to Nassau. Oh, young age. Yeah, very young. You did your schooling in Nassau? All my schooling in Nassau. Okay. Um, T. Gibson Primary, T. G. Glover. Junior High, CC Sweeting, Senior High. Which year you came? Which year you came out of Senior uh, CC Sweeting? Eighty-one. Oh, okay, the, the class of 1981. Yes, one of Who's the best boy? Let me see if you can Elijah remember. Elijah Knowles. Wow, who's your head girl? <laughs> uh, Joy Horton. That's Joy Horton, right? Wow. <laughs> what was the graduation theme song? I don't know. I did make sure I find something you could remember. Yeah, you, you I, went on cue. If, if, if I had lied, you wouldn't do it. No, I, no, yeah, I really wouldn't, because I wasn't there. No, but somebody no, but would honestly, call in. Somebody yeah. 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 No, Mr. Mr. Johnson lied. No, yeah. they say, Pastor yeah. Johnson lied, so uh, he, and I can't lie. No, I, no, no, I can't. I shouldn't lie. Yeah. Uh, let's talk about what happened with you with your eyes. Well, you know, I... Uh, I heard, I heard you made a comment that I procrastinated. Mm -hmm. Let me be the first to uh, agree yeah. that I, I, I did procrastinate, which I shouldn't have done. I had an accident, which, I, which uh, is my thinking that caused uh, glaucoma uh, in 1992, uh, around the greatest day in uh, August in 1992. August 19 day. <laughs> historical date. Yeah. Very historical date. Um, two days after that, I, I, while everybody was celebrating, I got shot um, with a shotgun pellet. And uh, apparently it went into my right temple. Um, I went to hospital because uh, of the damages and so on and so forth. but. The doctor then, in, in um, emergency, uh, accident emergency, said, we have to operate and we have to take that pellet out. And I refused to let them uh, take it out. And then, um, uh, that was in 92. By 1996, I realized that I was having eye problems. Uh, after having a few car accidents and uh, some very serious uh, mishaps, I realized I had to go and get it checked. So Dr. Rogers had an eye clinic on uh, Collins Avenue. I went to him and he said, you have glaucoma and you're going to be blind. And there's nothing we can do about it. I went to Dr. Rogers as for, uh, for a second opinion at PMH, at the eye clinic there. And he confirmed, but he said, we could do a little surgery to preserve your sight for about maybe a year or two. Uh, that would have been in 1996, I had that surgery, and true to form, by 1997, I was legally blind. In 1998, I was totally blind. And so my life had to jumpstart, I had to restart my life all over again. Of course, with uh, some challenges, some difficulty, um, not understanding exactly what uh, life would be without sight, uh, I felt suicidal, to be honest. Uh, I felt like my world had just fallen apart. And then I had an aunt, who, who she's still alive, my good aunt, and Frances Lede, 
Um, she came to me. She was a social. She was, in fact, she's the first social the worker. The social worker of the Bahamas. That's right. The first social worker of the Bahamas. Mm -hmm. Trained uh, um, uh, clinically. Well, actually, yeah, from university. Yes. And she came to my house and she saw me sitting there just pining away. And she said, "No, you know what, Tyrone? There's so much more in you. You need to get up and get out of here. Find something to do. Something." to get your life started again. And so I went and uh, went to the day skill center uh, with Miss Camille Bullard at Social Services. Mm -hmm. They taught me Braille. They taught me how to use the computer. They continued to teach me certain things. Uh, then Mr. William Lightborn, uh, God rest his soul, he passed on as well. He got me involved with some organizations like the Disabled Persons Organization, the Bahamas Alliance for the Blind and Visually Impaired, yes. and uh, did some retraining, uh, studied some other things I didn't know before, uh, became trained in, in, in mobility and uh, independent living. And uh, in 2001, uh, I was able to secure um, employment with the Ministry of Health now Ministry of Health and Wellness um, in the Adolescent Health Center and um, been, I've been there as a counselor now for the past 21 almost 22 years and um, I tell you my life a, a lot of people don't understand when I say this but to be honest with you uh, I became better as a blind person Amen. than before Amen. I could see, you know? I can believe you. Yeah, I became a whole different person. individual. I see things a lot different than people see. But again, do not procrastinate with your eyes. I tell people all the time, if you're having one little, is one little issue, with your eyes, one the, the the least little issue, get it checked. Go and get it checked immediately. Wow. I didn't know um, I, I didn't know that it would be so difficult losing sight. I had to find a job, and to be honest with you, I found a job as a blind person, uh, <clears throat> being a security officer at the Nassau Guardian. I was the, the security on guard um, in the daytime and in the night, and I could not see a lick. But the, the person who hired me, uh, God rest his soul as well, Mr. Eddie Seymour, Edmund Seymour, former police officer, he saw me working at a gas station in the nighttime, and I worked at the night because the little bit of sight I had left worked better for me at the night, and that deteriorated after a while. Wow. And so he saw me working, and he said, uh, I won't give you a job. And I didn't wear shades, I wore glasses. But it didn't work. But nobody knew because it was fake. The glasses weren't, they, they didn't, they were real glasses, but they didn't work. I couldn't see anything outside of them anyway. But he saw me there and he said, I want to give you a job. And I, he gave me a job and I said, what, what, what you want me to do? He said, I want you to be a security officer at the Guardian. And I'd pick you up every night and take you there. You work the midnight shift and then you get off in the morning. So I figured, well, I'm working at night. Nobody knows, nobody's there. But he saw me working so well. He shifted me to the day shift. <laughs> <laughs> and that's where my problem started. And Mr. Ken Francis, who, who, who noticed me, he said, yeah. he said, you're a good security. He's a good security. Because uh, every time he would come out of the building, we had to walk into his car. So I listened as he came out. He, he always had on the same cologne every day. Wow. So I smelled his cologne. I said, Mr. Francis is coming out. And so I walked behind him wow. till he got to his car. And when he came back, I would stay right there until he came back, because he'd park in the same spot every day. And when he came back, he'd walk inside the same way. And so as far as he was concerned... You could see. Yeah, as far as I could see. Until one day he wanted me to come inside <laughs> to move a box <laughs> <laughs> out of a room that I couldn't find. <laughs> <laughs> the rubber meet the ruin. Oh, my like goodness. They often say, you know, when you lose one sense, yeah, you yes. gain it in another uh, yes. way. Yeah. I mean, just to listen to you, you yeah. had to pay attention, paying attention Observe. to the cologne. Yes. Yes, like, yes. yes. You know, Instinct. Yeah. The, yeah. the good I, Lord I, made I, us, he wired us right, boy. Yes. But he, you know, he was, he, God knew exactly what he was doing. But, but I did that job for a year, and I thank God that I was able to take care of my responsibilities. As a man. Even as a, a man who was blind wow. and uh, who thought Excellent. he could not make it in life. Excellent. You have a wonderful uh, testimony. Excellent. Sean the Dapper can have you on his show. You need to talk to the man. No, yeah. I have a lady, Patrice, on the line. Patrice, good morning. Welcome to Direct Talk. 
Hi, David. How are you? Wonderful, darling. How are you doing? I am great, David. David, that gentleman is right on point. I am visually impaired from glaucoma. I'm now launching a book, My Journey from Sight to Insight. Wow. I'd like to get a copy of that to you. Mm-hmm. That gentleman is right on point. Life just begins after your sight have been taken from you because you see more when your sight leave you. So he is right on point. I had to learn to do things that I never did. And I found out that I learn every day and I try to create things to do with my hands. I don't just sit down and wonder why why is this happening to me or That's nothing right. like that? Oh, but all is in the book. I'm awesome. launching the book That's and right. I'll get it to you before the book is launched and you can go through the detail. No, you ain't gonna get the book to me. You can come on the show with the book. Uh-huh. We can talk about the book on the yes. show. Yeah. We can uh-huh. talk about your journey on the show. You live in Freeport or in Nassau? I'm in Nassau. Give me a phone number. I can get your number over there because I can call you today. David, 322. Oh, you wanna give it to my producer? Yes. Give I, I would like to get that number, too. So I, I, yeah. if you don't mind, Miss uh, Patrice. Give, give, me, give us the number. Name. What is the gentleman's name? It's Tyrone Johnson. Oh, I met you. Wow. What's the number, Patrice? 322? 5385. 5385. I can give that number to him. He can remember that. Yes, of I course. I want Tyrone to call me because I, 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 I remember Tyrone. Well, that's what I do. I store a number. My brain is like a computer now. Wow. <laughs> You're all giving wow. me pimples today. Wow. What did you say, Doc? Looking I, forward to I just from think, you, David. Uh, you were there for me today, darling. Okay. I think that's wonderful. Okay, I mean, nice. just to hear that, it, I think it's I think it's the positive attitude yes. that makes a difference. It is. It and is. if more of us in life learn yes. that, that that level of positivity, there's so much more we can achieve. Whatever yes. my lot. Yes. Oh, that, that was taught me to say. It is well. It is well. It is, it is, well. is well. Wow. That is it's awesome. Now you all cost me vision. My second guest don't make it today. <laughs> oh, this conversation. Stay right here. We're going to take a station break. When we come back, I'm going to check and see if I could get 15 more minutes with you. Let her wait for about 15 more minutes. You tune into the Rec Talk. I'm your host, David G. As we go to the Known Day Break. you see on this television station is governed by ERCA's Code of Practice for Content Regulation. The Code of Practice covers matters relating to program content that are of concern to the community, such as local content, news, current affairs and programs for children, advertising, including political advertisements and the responsibilities associated with broadcasting in the Bahamas. The Code also covers aspects such as access services for the hearing and visually impaired and the procedure for lodging a complaint about anything broadcasted by this television station. The code is available on IRCA's website at www.ircabahamas.bs. To receive a copy of the code by mail or in person, you may telephone IRCA at 242-393-0234. Family Island dialing is toll-free at 242-300-8722. Or you may send a request by email to info at urkabahamas.bs.
community page now has its own home on channel 230. Be sure to tune into this channel to see informative notices, funeral announcements, birthday greetings, and much, much more. So watch the ZNS Community Channel today on Cable 230. Welcome back to Direct Talk. Uh, I'm your host, David G., here in the capital city of Nassau. As I begin the afternoon segment, I want to send a belated birthday greetings out to Pastor Patricia Lang Bodhi uh, in Freeport, Grand Bahama, a descendant of Pelican Point, East Grand Bahama, the daughter of the late Reverend Doc, Doc Lang and Mrs. Marlene Lang, uh, coming from her four beautiful children, Renato and Vesna Lang and Shanishka and Shabad Bodhi. Her six grand and her one great grand and the family of Kingdom Harvest, uh, headed up by Pastor Darius, Pastor and Prophet Darius. And then I also want to send a birthday shout out to Latik Gibson from her mom, Lenora, and her aunt Queenie Gibson. I can send a shout out to Mr. Etheric Bo of AFS Insurance. Always. Um, encouraging me uh, on the show. I always buck him at the airport. Um, Got to send a shout-out to him. And yesterday, Mrs. Enid Lockhart celebrated her 99th birthday. Wow. I awesome. went to her celebration from Duncan, to, they say that proudly, Duncan Town, Ragged Island. Mm -hmm. I tell them, in a great month. Only, only Duncan yeah. Town in Ragged Island, you know, in the other <laughs> uh, My wife from Duncan Town. They just brag with this Duncan Town. And Glow tells me is now Ashes Hill and, and uh, West Side. They, they, they they divide Little Duncan down into four little areas now. And I gotta send a shout out today to Corrine Brown and Geraldine Brown and my boy Larry Brown, the senior mayor of Bimini. Yeah, and um, I want to extend condolences to Larry. Um, passing of Deidre Donathan passed away this morning. Really? Uh, yeah, I got the sad news. We worked together wow. at Nassau Flight Services where she was the general manager, her and Tonya and Plato. I served as the chairman, and, and um, I think it was been in 2000, um, yeah, 2007, sometime around there, I, I think. And I had a wonderful time with them at Nassau Flight Services. Wow. Hard-working lady, uh, counting by profession, uh, always wearing these nice big baggy pants. Uh, I got to send a sympathy shout out to her daughter. I don't know her name, but um, I got to find her name to call her. Call Larry, her brother, today. Um, the Lord answers prayer. Um, Dr. Penn says she's on her way. If she's, I think she's out in the parking lot, actually, where she, where she's to come. I say, come to the office. <laughs> they can let you inside. So we'll have her on in about 15 to 20 minutes, okay. but I gotta, I gotta, I gotta give you all a couple more minutes. Now, you know, you have inspired me, uh, Mr. Johnson. Yes. I might you. have to bring you back to talk about your journey. Thank you. Um, not, not a problem. To, to be an encouragement to others. Yes. 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 Um, yes. Yes. The Bible yes. says, and you know, when you were talking about the person who gave you the job, my, my eyes went back to the Bible that says, for as much as you've done for the least of these, hallelujah, you've done it unto me. But I was telling him the thing was that he barely had a job. He worked so well yes. that he did not have to apply. He was able to be noticed. And he was offered a job. By the boss. Mm -hmm. Because of his attitude. Yes. And that is so important. Yes. I mean, if you end up with a condition, whether it's glaucoma or any other disease, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. it is mm -hmm. your outlook and your attitude that makes a big difference. It, it is. Sure is. It does. It does. And it has helped me over the 21 years uh, working in the Department of Public Health. It has brought a whole uh, sense of gratitude uh, to me because of the attitude that I work with. And it, there's nothing, there's no job too big for me to accomplish, and there's nothing too small that I don't pay attention to. Raise your voice just a little bit more for me. There's nothing too uh, big for me to accomplish, and of course, there's nothing too small that I don't pay attention to. So yeah. my whole attitude in life 
has changed. And it's it's all because of the preservation of the Almighty God Can I get of my amen? life. Can I get amen? You better believe it. I, I, can't, I, don't do, I don't owe anything else to anyone else except to him. In addition to that, oh. though, I... Uh, go ahead. I, I'm, I'm hoping and trusting that as a result of the incidents that you have encountered, that you are still making sure that you get your regular eye care. Because even though you're diagnosed with glaucoma, and even though you don't have your sight, yes. that doesn't mean that he still, needs, still, he still needs care. He st he yeah, still needs yeah to there's still care. Yes. It has to be uh, given because of what, what other damages can happen to wow. the eyes, exactly. even though they're not, you're not using them or they're not working. But um, they can be uh, become sunken because of further de deterioration. Wow. Because they're the anatomy of the anatomy of the eye. Mm -hmm. There's still other tissues that are yeah. involved in this whole mm -hmm. process. Mm -hmm. And so, you all need to come back, <laughs> uh, Mr. Store. You are on line one. Thank you for holding. Welcome to Direct Talk. Hello. Yes, sir. Yes. Um, good morning, Mr. Wallace. Good morning, and good day to you, guests. Yes, sir. Good day. Um, good day, sir. Good morning. Um, I called to say hi to. Um, Mr. Johnson. Yes. Hi, Mr. Johnson. Cecil Store. Hi, Mr. Johnson. Cecil Store, yeah. How you doing, Cecil? I'm okay. How are you? Long time no see, man. Well, I ain't seen so well. I could hear you on, 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 on the TV, though. He, can, he no so voice well. on the phone or not. <laughs> <laughs> right, I, have to, I have to call and hear you up, man. Yeah, man. Hey, it's good to hear from you. We got to get together soon, man. Oh, wow. Okay, man. Um... Um, you still have my number? No, give it... Uh, he, 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 shout it out. He can shout it out. Just tell me that I got it. Okay, uh, my number is 436 mm -hmm. 3611. Okay, 436 right. I will yeah. call you as soon as the show is over. Okay, man, you take care. Thank, Do well. Thank, thank you for tuning in. Okay, Mr. Wallace. Thank you for tuning in, man. Jesus okay, Lord. I listen to you every day. Wow. <laughs> God bless you. You all take care. Yes. All right, okay. I meet people every day who tell me they listen to the show every day. I had, my daughter said she was in the bank one day, had a client, she's the manager of Scotiabank, Devonia. And uh, our client, she was filling out an application for the lady, and at quarter of 11 half, the lady phoned that off. So the lady said, I have to go. She said, where do you have to go? Say, your daddy show coming on 11 o'clock. <laughs> <laughs> there are lots of people that listen to you, because there were people who were able to tell me yeah, that I was on the, on, gonna be on radio, and I said, how you heard that? Are well, you going to be on David Wallace's show? Uh -huh. <laughs> okay. Mr. Okay. Johnson. I, I like your show, man. I love it. Thank you for tuning in. Closing, closing comments. Well, listen, again, we, we, we may, we may en encourage you to continue having a good attitude and to be positive even in the light of uh, catastrophe or ca chaos or crisis in your life. But the, the main point that we want you but to he do... See, he, 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 he could see. The way he's talking, you ain't talking like no blind man. <laughs> go ahead, go ahead. I do not vision. procrastinate. I do have vision. Yes. I, do not, I may not have sight, but, but I have vision. vision. Amen. Do not procrastinate with the eyes that God has blessed you with. I have to wake up every morning without looking at my beautiful wife, without seeing my children, uh, my grandchildren, my granddaughter, who is so beautiful. I can't see her. I can't drive anymore. I can't uh, watch the sunrise. I can't see the moon set. I can't look at the beautiful waters of the Bahamas. I can't see the aquamarine gold and black. I can't see those things. So if we want to continue to see all these wonderful things that God has blessed us with, Amen. please preserve your sight this is, at all costs. This is becoming one of the most touching shows that I've done. It's incredible. You've done my job. I, yeah. I don't have to go yeah. ahead and tell yeah. people and, and, and you can, and have your preventative eye care. You've done that. Because you can see and you have vision. That's right. <laughs> tell us where we could find you for your service, and let's talk about some other people who are, who's in the business that we could reach out to. to Family Eye Care is currently located on Rosetta Street, um, right opposite the Labor Board. It's in a yeah, two-story building right on the ground floor right opposite the Labor Board on Rosetta Street. What's the phone number to call? Telephone number is 322-3393. Say, let's say that again. To, to, hold on. Let's come off the bus for the people who have to go find a piece of paper and find their pen, <laughs> and then they got to get back to the radio or the television to write this number down. What's the number to call? The telephone number is 322-3393. Mm -hmm. Email address? Email address is Family Eye Care Center, but that's center spelled with a T-R-E at gmail.com. F-A-M-I-L-Y-E-Y-E-C-A-R-E-C-E-N-T-R-E. Oh, you spell it the British? Yes. You spell it the rich way. The, the British, British way. Center. Uh -huh. At gmail.com. Okay. 
you know, my elementary school was Woods Rogers Primary, I so, know. you know, yeah, yeah. Yeah, British influence. Yes. <laughs> why, why do you think we drive on the left-hand side of the road and have a cup of tea in the afternoon? Are they um, and they're coming in on Thursday. Okay, mm -hmm. that's yeah, right. Absolutely. My cell number there is 424-3937. Who are some of the other doctors that you know of? Uh, I know we have Dr. Ash in Grand Bahama. Yes, um, we also have Dr. Ebby Jackson, Dr. Anita Brown, Dean, uh, Dr. Clive Gaskins, Dr. Richard Knowles, Dr. Don Russell Hermans, Dr. Rana Green, Dr. Jeffrey Sweeting, Do uh -huh. Dr. Um, Rogers, um, I trust I have a left. Dr. Guerrero. Dr. Guerrero. Oh, yes, Dr. He's Guerrero. Been, he's been good to me. Um, and even in Grand Bahama, there's Dr. Nolan Roll Farkerson. Um, I think I would have covered. So, yeah, we have, we have a good complement of eye care providers that are here in the Bahamas. And, um, so those that are, there are some others that are at the hospital as well, but we have our eye care providers that really are able to be of service to the country. You know, at the hospital, there are additional compliments there. There's Dr. Tinio and there are um, both Dr. T and S. Aurora there that are compliments at the hospital as well. So we've got quite a number of eye care professionals that would be able to ensure that the public is well taken care of. Thank you. I want to send uh, a message out to Patrice, who called in. Um, I'm going to give her Wednesday the 30th at um, 12 to 1. Okay. The name of the show is Let There Be Light. Wow. And there was light. Gotta have a come on. Let's talk about our book. Excellent, excellent. Let's, let's talk about our journey. Yes. Let's, let's, in, let's encourage others along the of way. Course. Yes, of that's course. That's important. Any shout outs before we leave? Can I, I, can I, I didn't realize can you were married. And can I, <laughs> I just love it. Are you, can I say, are you a Christian? I'm a born again believer. Amen. I'm a pastor, by the way. Praise the Lord. What's the name of the church? Yeah, Judah Worship Center. Amen. And Davis Street. Um, I want to say thanks to the Bahama Society of Ophthalmic Nurses for inviting me to be a part of this show this morning, um, which would have been, um, uh, in fact, I would have been involved with the Bahama Society of, of Ophthalmic Nurses for quite a few years. And uh, every, every event they have, I'm a part of. And I say thanks to them for thinking of me in such a way. And I also want to say good morning uh, to my family. Uh, I have some family in Tennessee who are watching right now. Uh, and paying attention to this show, Sarah. Hey, Sarah. In Tennessee? In Tennessee, yes, sir. <laughs> yeah. And of the, course... The chairman, Piceville, told me we have about 60,000 listeners on Facebook and about 40,000 on television. That's right. right. I don't know. Well, and so, and so all, all, and all, all of my staff at Adolescent Health, uh, not my staff, but those who hey, I work staff. with. Hey, your staff. <laughs> you, you just walk the boss to the car. Hey, your staff. And uh, of that's course, right, uh, that's right. as we are celebrating International Adolescent Health Week, I want to say shout out to all of them and to all of my siblings uh, and my brother who is in Bluff, Carolina, right now. Wow. Um, hey, hey, Phil, how you doing, man? Wow. And of course, my brother Kingsley, who is in uh, Dumf uh, Orange Creek, Carolina, right now. Good morning family. Stay right there. You, Mrs. Munnings, you are on line one. Good afternoon. Welcome to the Direct Talk. Is Ms. Munnings there? Hello, um, David. Yes, ma'am. I, I heard the doctor said the eyes can't be transplanted. And just like Tyrone, my baby was shot in the head. But the hospital said they could transplant the eye. But because of his specialty, He's autistic. He's not going to behave. He's not going to keep on the back. They said he would mess up their surgery, so they couldn't do it. So but she's saying it can't be transplanted. I'll, 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 I'll let her comment on it. There can be a transplantation of the cornea. If there is damage done to the cornea of the eye, that is able to be transplanted. Uh -huh. But the eye itself can't be transplanted, not where you're going to be able to um, obtain any vision from it at all. So I'm not... Yes, that's right. They did say the cornea. Oh. Yes, the cornea can be transplanted. Yes. 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 Okay. Any other questions oh, for Doc, Mrs. Ms. Mullings? Thank you for calling in. Ms. Evans, you're on line two. Ms. Evans, welcome to Direct Talk. 
I'm out. Yes, uh, ma'am. This is Shirley Evans. I just wanted to say I'm enjoying the show. I wanted to say to Mr. Johnson, the Bible says I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. Yes. I also wanted to sing a song to him through all the changing scenes of life. Through all the changing scenes of life. That is the song. That is awesome. the song awesome. for the day. Thank oh, you so much. Thank you. Thank you so much, man. You're welcome. Appreciate oh, it. Thank you. Attitude determines your altitude. There you go. Amen. There you Keep go. on praising God. Amen. Thank you, Mrs. Evans. Carolyn on line one. Welcome to Direct Talk. Hi, Carolyn. Hi, yes. Um, afternoon. Yes, ma'am. Hello. Yes, ma'am. Uh, yes, I'm calling. I had a corneal. I had a cornea surgery done in 20, and my eyes have been very good. They say it was the best they had seen in a long time. Mm -hmm. It healed very well. That's excellent. Yes. That's yes. just evidence of the fact of, yes, corneal, I had, I had corneal trans... I in Miami. Corneal transplants um, can be very successful. Mm -hmm. Amen. Mm -hmm. That is good to hear. Yes. Mm -hmm. Kelly Burroughs says we were yes, singing I the English... Yes, I have to get the... Uh, they tell me I have a, what they call not glaucoma, um, cataract not need to be removed. So I have to go to get that done because they could not do the two at the same time. Wow. If we all live to be old enough, we will all be at risk for cataract development. Sooner or later. Sooner or if you live long enough. If we all live long enough, it's going to happen. Um, Kelly Burrow says we were singing the Anglicans national anthem. Oh, yes. 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 Is that Ms. Evans on line two, Mr. Producer? No. Closing comments, Doctor, do, my good friend. Uh, well, doc. I have to, at first, I need to send a shout out, particularly to my parents. Um, my mother may not be tuned in if, because she's at a meeting, but my father certainly is. Tell him I gotta have him on the show. We gotta um, have, yes. I'm bringing a saxophone. <laughs> Listen, <we're gonna> stop <laughs> right now. You know, they've sacrificed so much to be able to afford me to yes. be able to have the profession that I have yes. and to be able to give back yes. to my community. Yes. So I'm ever so grateful to them. So, Shout out to Mr. and Mrs. Charles Wallace. Hey, Amen. I want to salute you. And salute, I want to salute especially this Tyrone Johnson yeah. for his attitude. Yes, for God. attitude. Uh, is your God attitude God. determines your altitude. Yeah, that is. Uh, you got to go talk to some schools. Oh, I do. Yes, I yes. do. Okay, you got to go talk <laughs> yeah. to some children. I do. Uh, Every Ms. day. Ms. Nesbitt from Grand Bahama online, too. Hi, Ms. Nesbitt. Good morning. This is Ms. Nesbitt calling. Morning, Mr. David. How you doing? And your panelists. Thank you. Yeah. Just, just calling in to say to God be the glory. This, this particular show is very touching, you know. And I give God thanks for the Mr. Johnson and Dr. Wallace. God is so, so good. That's it's nice. very encouraging nice. to me. It lifts my spirit. Thank God. Just that. knowing that God is real. To be oh, God. Amen. To be the glory. glory. To God You'll be, be the glory. Thank you very You'll much. Be blessed, man. Th that's the closing comment. I don't. She, she like. He took your line. She took my own. <laughs> <laughs> you tune into the back talk. We go to our station break. When we come back, I'm going to be joined with as we continue this wonderful. I started a new dreamers of Nassau. People can know some of these new services and who these new doctors are. Yeah, but you yeah. know, the thing is, many of us, like I said, we've been here yeah. for a long time, long time and making the contributions. Yes. And my like the key point that I would just say is. The eyes are the window to the world right. and to the body. Amen. Amen. Let's preserve them. Let's so. take care of them mm -hmm. because we've only got one pair. One pair. Mm -hmm. Turn to the Red Talk. I'm your host, David G. Coming up, we're going to have the new dreamers of Nassau, Dr. Jacqueline Penn Knowles. Talk about her journey. Yes. So we go to the station break.
get it on the road and we want you to join us for live coverage from Bahamar on March 25th at 7 and 11 p.m. for a special edition of the Bahamas Tonight, The Royal Visit. Welcome back to Direct Talk, final segment. I'm your host, David G. The Bahamas there awaits me for 4.30 today. I got to send a shout out to those pilots of Bahamas there and those flight off first officers of Bahamas there. Oh, uh, I came <laughs> back on Monday on flight 316. Um, Captain Michael Pinder and first officer Vito Cartwright. Uh, my flight attendants was Chanel Thompson and Teddy Simmons. And in Freeport, the agents were Harold Williams and Graham Forbes, Adriana Johnson, Eula Mae Francis, and Samantha Ferguson. I can't wait to get home. There's no place like home. And WRBD, the radio station, used to say one time, uh, got a full weekend. Come back to Nassau on Saturday. Okay, okay. Uh, spend one day, just uh, not overnight. I'm uh, going to come back to host the Bahamas Cooperative League, a host of credit unions on Paradise Island. So I'll come in that morning, host that, have some fun with them play some games with them, take them on a stroll down memory lane, mm -hmm. rub-a-dub-dub, three men in the tub. tub. But who do you think they are? The butcher, the, butcher, the baker, oh, and the candlestick maker. Yeah, you're going to be nice. It's not then, been that long. And then I'll be back on Monday. Tomorrow, we're going to have the Seaside Lanes in the first segment, and remembering the life and legacy of the late Alveston Edwards in the second segment on Thursday. There will be no show on Friday. And so um, I'll then see you on Monday, the Royal Visit. And um, 
We all getting ready. Pussycat, pussycat, say where have you been? Been to London to see the queen. Pussycat, pussycat, what did you there? Say I frightened a little mouse. Under the chair. Under the chair. The pussycat never saw the queen, you know. He was looking at the mouse. He's too busy with the mouse. Yeah. I agree. Joining me now in the final segment, New Dreamers of Nassau, Dr. Jacqueline Penn Knowles. Welcome to Direct Talk. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Wallace, for having me. Tell me a little bit who this Jacqueline Penn Knowles is, where she was born, and where she grew up, and where she went to school. So, okay, where was I born? I was born here in Nassau, Bahamas. My parents were still late, Rudyard Penn and Evangeline Penn. Um, I went to primary school in Fox Hill. Actually, I spent up to um, my primary school in Fox Hill, and then we moved into Carmichael. Okay. I'm a graduate of Prince Williams High School. Shout out to the Falcons. Wow, which um, year? You uh, really want to say <laughs> Class of 81. Okay, all right. <laughs> and so from there, um, yeah, I did my undergraduate studies at Florida Memorial okay. and went on to Dominican Republic. Uh -huh. I stayed in Dominican Republic for four years and studied medicine. Came home in the midst of the fight because I studied at a foreign uh, medical school, so it took me a while to get into the system. What language they speak in the DR? Spanish. Yeah, so you. So I was able to learn an, another language. Que hora es? Sí, un poquito habla, un poquito. Sí, para muchos años pasada necesito um, practicar. So I've been spoken in a while. I need to practice a little bit. So since then, I've been. Um, back and forth. I studied reproductive health with Dr. Jurgen Eisenman at South Florida Institute for Reproductive Medicine. Mm -hmm. And then I went on to Jamaica where I did internship and came home and worked at Princess Margaret Hospital in the Department of Obstetrics um, as an SHO. And, what, what um, is an SHO? A senior house officer. Okay. Um, after being in the, the department, I decided, you know, it's time for me to clip wings and come out on my own. So I'm flying. I believe I can <laughs> I believe fly. I can fly. Yeah. So the, the good thing about it is I was, I'm now able to practice something that I love, which is reproductive medicine. So I'm now the proprietor and the physician at Clinic Care Center on Marathon Road, which is also um, Women Care Reproductive and Diagnostic Center. Tell us a little bit about the services you provide. What is uh, reproductive medicine? medicine? So what we do right now is we assist persons who are having difficulty conceiving. Okay. Um, I see young, old, and the, and the young at heart. Um, we see a lot of men with, with male factor infertility. We see a lot of young women or women that have difficulty conceiving um, as long as that person has a patent tube, meaning that the tubes are open, we can offer them what we call intrauterine insemination. Okay. So intrauterine insemination is where we would collect the specimen, wash it in a lab. So in my office, I have a laboratory. I would prepare the sperm under sterilized um, condition and then insert that sperm directly into the uterus. Let's say that the young lady has a blockage, maybe have had a tubal and decide now that they want to have another child, or it's now, you know, find another fella and I want to have another child. We are affiliated with centers in Barbados, Florida, like I said, IVF MD, Dr. Jurgen Eisenman and his team, um, and Jamaica. Uh, where I would do all of the workup for that, assess and start the patients here. But because at this time, I don't have a IVF lab, we cannot do retrieval and transfer. Um, so they would go out for the retrieval and transfer. So I would work with the clinic, whichever clinic there is, and I would monitor them up until time for retrieval and transfer. They go out to either of the centers. Once they've been retrieved, and once they've been transferred, then they come back and we would fin finish the um, care there. You know, this is all new to me. I've heard of <laughs> artificial insemination. Is, is this what? It basically, that's what it is. Exactly, yeah. it is. That's what it is. That's what it is. Conception is not as easy as people think. That's so, correct. So you guys say that so everybody can hear. No, conception yeah. is not as easy as people think. And some people are challenged. Oh, very lots much. Of people are challenged. Very and much. people. One of the things that happens in the Bahamian population is you get married. And in six months, then people start asking, 
What happened? Wow. What happened to her? That's right. Oh, what happened to him? And that's right. <laughs> you know, don't they don't often ask what happened to him. him. They, they always say ask what happened her. to her. <laughs> and you know, there are lots of times that there are some challenges with the conception on either end. Yes. Mm -hmm. And so that becomes a very touchy thing for a lot of couples. But people are not cognizant of that and not or they're sensitive to it. So you know, and that's one of the things that we really need to become sensitive to because there are some people that really have a challenge when they it comes do. to conception. That's correct. That's correct. And the bad part, the, the thing, of, the, yeah, yeah. The, the thing about it is, just like Dr. Wallace said, you have a lot of couples that are challenged. And I always say to them, you know, society could be cruel. Yes. Very cruel to a couple. Yes. You know, and a lot of times when, even though, um, a couple may be going to different physicians for whatever their reasons are. And I always say to the, you know, even physicians, when I speak to them, you have to be mindful that you might have had a child or not have a child and you might not realize what this couple is going through. Yes. So we have to know, one, how to speak to that couple, Second, yes. be mindful of what they're going through. Yes. Because even at home, you know, I have patients who would say, Doc, I cannot even go to a christening. Because I go to a christening and I and I, I find myself crying, you know what what's wrong with me? And I have to say, you know, sometimes you just gotta tell them when they say anything to you. Oh, girl, we're not ready yet. Yeah. And you'd be surprised to know what what they're really trying, you know, going through. There are like, lots of people who don't go to Mother's Day ceremonies. That's right. Lots of females don't go to Mother's Day ceremony. Don't. It's all very they celebratory. Sound. But not everybody could handle that because when people have a challenge with conception, mm. they don't deal with those services very well. Wow. Yeah, that 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 is true. Um, and and the thing, the biggest thing that I find here of late is we would be surprised to know how many male factor infertility there is because the men always say it's not me, right. and especially even if they they had a child, a young, they'd say, you know, oh, I have a child. But that doesn't mean that, you know, he himself at this time yes. doesn't have a problem, you know. So when you, when you work up the patients, you have to work up both as a couple. So even for consultation, I would say, can you bring your partner? A lot of times, we as women always want to protect our partner. Oh, doc, he ain't come. Oh, doc, he ain't do that in that cup. But doc, having, I said, just bring him for me, please. Yes, yes. And after you've spoken to them, you'll. Men really, they want it just as much as, as their wife or their significant other does, and so they would go ahead and do it. That's how God made man, you know. Yeah. Made women. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You have to have the conversation. Sometimes it's just that they don't know. They don't. Um, so you have to be able to educate, educate them, them as well. That's, That's right. Important. Knowledge is yeah. still power. Knowledge is yep. Power. It surely is. Are you seeing success from the clinic? Definitely, definitely. Um, we we had just during the pandemic. Well, that would uh, be a busy time for you. <laughs> <laughs> well, no, because <laughs> you know the thing you is, you didn't get up, but everybody was locked in. Locked in. <laughs> yeah, they were locked in, and so they were just thinking. Now we lock in, and we don't have no children, so they came out of the pandemic running. You know, <laughs> we got to get into this. The good thing during the pandemic was um, a couple that got conceived during um, IUI with triplets. Wow. With triplets. Um, that was actually my first triplets. Wow. I have twins, um, but this was my first triplet. But, you know, circumstances is. But they, they have lovely kids now. It's been wonderful. That was, that was really a good thing. Modern medicine, the advancement of medicine. Yeah. The advancement of medicine. We're coming a long way. God has instilled in man the wisdom. And you all are doing a wonderful job of being able to, one, help with the eyes, and you are able to help with fertility. Yes, thank you. Thank you. You know, this, this show today, I, know, I never dreamed this show was going to be as impactful as it is. It's amazing how God could take the simple things and become so profound. Like mm -hmm. I said to you, you know, yes, our show got delayed because it was supposed to happen during glaucoma week, but, you know, God audits our steps. Yes. That's right. And glaucoma is something that we have to live with, not during just one week. Mm -hmm. We have to live with it for our, the rest of our lives. And so it's always important to, to be able it. to talk about it mm -hmm. and be encouraged and get more information so that patients understand 
how important it is to take care of their eyes. And then as I went, like, when, when Dr. Knowles, Penn Knowles walked and she started talking about her mother. Yes, yes, exactly. like, I, like I said to Dr. Wallace, my mom, who's 82, God, I mean, she is amazing. She still cooks. So every Sunday, you all home? of her children. Home. I'm telling you, I've been married now 29 years, and 29 years Your every time I'm there before he come home. He, he goes there when I was away. Mommy would cook and make sure he have his food, right? <laughs> so even now we have to go. And if you don't go there on a Sunday, she wants to know. What well, happened? what happened? Anybody can pack your food up so you can have it for tomorrow. <laughs> uh -huh. You know, yeah, God bless It means mama. that we really, in many mm -hmm. cases, sometimes our parents are not going to complain. Yeah. But we have to be the ones to say, listen, these things need to be done. be done. We want to make sure that you maintain the best health pos possible. Yes. And so we have to ensure that they have complete annuals complete eye exams, mm -hmm. those things are important. Yes. Yes. Their dental checkups, it, it's important for us to be able to do as children. Yeah. Yes, yes. And you were saying about mommy that you, which you all discovered? Yeah, so mom went to have her eyes checked and found out that she has um, lost her, uh, her vision in the right eye, Tohu, to cataract. And she's like just a quarter could barely see out of the the left eye. And I didn't complain. Didn't complain. Right? You know, no, we, we complain. like I would say, Dr. Wells, <laughs> the funny thing about it is every time mommy would come out the car or we're going to church, she'd we'd always automatically she reach for us. So we, my sister and I and my brothers would just reach for her right. to oh, hook wow. on to us yeah. to what but we always say Oh, it's mommy's balance because she had a problem with balance. But you know, if you think about it, that, vision, that's, that's exactly all of that why. work exactly. together. So once I said, mommy, you could read some money in the glove compartment. I saw her potting. This was after she had the. So I said to my sister, I said, Aunt, mommy, can see you know. So she said, I told you that the doctor said. She, so we're preparing for her to have cataract surgery in the and next that's, month. That's the good thing that at least if it's a loss of vision that, that's temporary because of a, a yes. dense cataract, mm -hmm. at least once that cataract is removed mm -hmm. and everything is healthy in the back of the eye, then her sight is restored. Okay. That's, that's a good thing. Yeah. Okay. yeah, yeah. And I always say, you know, the good thing about my mother is she's blessed with three sons who steps in just like her daughters does you know my my oldest brother he cuts up the herbs and he he would help her in the kitchen because he knows she can't so he you know separates and help and she sit there and say tone put some more salt in that <laughs> <laughs> she can taste she can taste so she can say um tone you check that that look like that all right turn that over for mom but you know wow. she so it, it's it's good and she's 82 like yeah, I they said have some before. skills she's... that they just that they're blessed with you know mm -hmm. just, just, Natural just innate yes, yes. Innate. just innate right. how much children does mommy have Mommy has five. Oh, she no. had she had seven okay. actually. She had six. Let me say she had six. The my sister died from pancreatic cancer, and so now she has three boys and two girls. Okay, right. who's the oldest? Let's start with the oldest child that she had. The, the oldest is a boy. What's his name? Anthony Tony Penn. Okay. And then it's Rudy, who was a twin to the sister that died. Um, Rudy it's Rudy Penn. Junior. Yes. Well, what was the and sister who died? Name? Rosalind. Okay. Penn. And then it was then it's me. Okay. Um, and then my brother. Rico, and then my baby sister Anya. Pen. She's Pen Macintosh. Okay. Mm -hmm. How many Sorry. siblings does mommy and daddy have? Um, I have one brother, one sister. Okay. Who's the oldest? I'm the eldest. Okay. And then there's my sister Kayla. What's her um, last name? Kayla Hilton. Okay. And my brother Carville Wallace. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And what yeah. happened? Your mommy then wasn't like that. I asked the people who used to make 14 and 15 children back in the Well, era. you see, uh, at some point, no. Yeah, she she had to stop. So after six, but it, my my we had seven. My oldest sister Hazel lived in Freeport. Like no, I said to you, no, and well. talk about eye disease. Hazel um, had diabetes. Well, we used to tell her she was a walking medical encyclopedia because my sister had everything. She had heart disease, so she had three sets of heart surgery, mm -hmm. she had a quadruple bypass. She was blind. She was a bilateral amputee. Yes. And David, if you know Hazel, she Hazel mouth was hard. Hazel is the back. only person. Bilateral amputee, heart disease, diabetes, hypertension, blind, but used to call the prime minister and tell him, or yeah. call Dr. Sands. Yes. Oh, she loved Dr. Sands. Yeah. She used to but call you see, Dr. It's the same Sands. Thing we said about yes. Tyrone. It's just like Tyrone. Yes. It's, it's, it's your attitude. Dude, she would call him and she would say, You you, you know, you were on the show yesterday, or, and 
I don't like what you say, or you need to correct that. Yeah. You you know, she, Hazel she, was she, married. She was. She worked at National Insurance. She used to be with National Insurance until she retired. Yeah. And Hazel used to call National Insurance or Cable Bahamas and say, "Hey, I need the number for if you know if I." I was having a situation at the hospital when I was trying to get when I was get, getting ready to go in. She says, "Jack, who's the person um you need to speak?" And I said, "Hey, so I, no, I have it." Well, she wants to know because she called the minister in Ministry of Health, yeah, and she's yeah, gonna yeah. say, um, "My sister uh -huh. has applied, and um, how long are y'all gonna be?" <laughs> 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 she she was hilarious. Yeah. Well, that's my that was my sister Hazel. Yeah, I wanted. <clears throat> Thank you all for the wonderful services you all have been doing to this country. Um, what you're doing now, let's talk about how persons can reach you. Sure. So my clinic is Clinic Care Center. I'm located on Marathon Road, number 33 Marathon Road. Come, 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 come off the bus. Okay? Say it a little slow because I got some people who just went to go. <laughs> <laughs> they, they now hear that they have a chance that they may be able to talk to a doctor who might assist them because they might be at age 35 or 40 like me and don't have any children. Mm -hmm. and, uh, and it's a service that you provide that I don't know of no other doctor. Uh, you could tell me if any other doctor that you know of is doing it here on the island. So let's talk again about where, where, where the clinic, what the name of the clinic and some phone numbers. Okay. So it's Clinic Care Center. Mm -hmm. It's number 33 Marathon Road. Um, the numbers are... Two four two three five three two five eight eight five zero or two. The fax is three two five eight eight five four. You can reach us via cell, which is eight two five two two seven three. Okay, and the <coughs> email address. The email is drjpk. Dot clinic care at gmail.com. So that's Dr. Jacqueline Penn Knowles dot clinic here at gmail.com. And it's one C, C L I N I C A R E at gmail.com. And the phone number one more time. Just. It's area code 242 325 8850 or 2. The cell is 825 2273. A good friend of mine, Stanley Brown, asked me a question yesterday. I can put it to you. What was the area code before it was 242? Uh-huh. 809. 809. Yeah. You all right? Same with that. 809. Took a little while to get it. Yeah. It was playing Jeopardy. Dun, 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 dun. I would have gone this show. Even thought that I had. Dun, 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 dun. Yeah. Are you enjoying what you're doing? And I there, love it. Is there I any love other doctors it. that are involved in the services that you provide? Any other, any other doctor working with you? So with me right now, I have an obstetric and gynecologist, Dr. Veronda Shakaka. She's actually a consultant with Princess Margaret Hospital. So uh, clinic here also, you know, we offer obstetrical care delivery. So once it's a one-stop shop, come in. You can do all your you, labs. You, you help get get you pregnant. We get you pregnant. <laughs> we deliver. We monitor. We monitor. And, <laughs> and I deliver. have yes. And I, let me give a shout out to my excellent team. I have a small team. I have my office manager, Rajanique Penn. Okay. And I have a beautiful nurse, Isha Johnson. You know, okay. they have my back all the time. Okay. You know, one thing I, I like about my staff is we don't work. 8 to 8 30 to, to 4 30 like most office because of reproductive health if somebody cycle starts and we need to draw them that may be on a saturday or a sunday once they call in my staff will come and they'll make it happen medical terminology we need to draw them you know i lost <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I mean she can paint a picture of them <laughs> Ah, we need to get some blood it's a from them. Well, it's a different, yeah. kind of a different kind of picture if we need to test them um whatever it is okay yeah, we, we're ready. We're always open to serve. And on call. And we're on call okay. all the time. Yeah. Yeah, uh, staffing is important. And so I, I certainly extend my hats off to my staff at Family Eye Care Center. Yes. I, I, can't, I can't make it without them. Yes. Mm -hmm. um, many times people will call me and they say, I, can I get an appointment? I say, listen, why don't you call this number? No. Because my staff say, <laughs> listen, don't. they are... They are excellent at what they, but they do, do. Yes. they're able to go ahead mm -hmm. they could finagle the schedule yes. they could fit you in they yeah. could create what needs to happen it's, you get in our way just, yeah. do just you go do. Yeah. let us that's do what, what we do. do yeah and that, yeah and that's fine. I, I agree with you because sometimes patients walk in and they said did you tell her to come 
I said, well, I, I, uh, so now I, I'm like you. I would say that, you, you know, you, could you call, call the front? Be, or they say, well, do I come? I said, I think you better call the front because I may tell you the wrong right? Yeah. 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 yeah, whatever it is. Yeah. yeah. No, Shika and Dash, I am eternally grateful to what's, them. What's their full name? Mm -hmm. Well, that's what their name is. So Sheikha Bryce okay. and Dashna Christian. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> you have any staff in the family islands that you visit? Or and they, they... Actually, Cheryl Johnson, is, uh, she assists me at the moment in um, Harbor Island. Okay. I'm eternally grateful for her. She actually worked along with me when I was working in Harbor Island the first 19 years. <laughs> <laughs> you were posted there? No, I, oh. I actually used to fly there. I spent one weekend, I flew to... Governor's Harbor one weekend, the next weekend I'd work in Nassau, then one weekend I'd work in Abaco, and one weekend I'd work in Harbor Island. Married yeah. or single? I was, initially it started when I was single, Okay. but certainly um, when I was married, it, it continued. Absolutely. It continued. Mm -hmm. um, oh, it's hard. I was ble I'm blessed with one daughter. She's not here now, but... Um, what is her name? Her name is Symphony. Okay, Symphony with a C. Oh, okay. Mm -hmm. yeah. Beautiful. Beautiful. Yeah. Beautiful, yeah. beautiful name. Yeah. Uh, mm -hmm. Where's Symphony now? She's actually in university um, in New Jersey, Montclair you're, State University. You're doing for her what your parents did for you. That's I'm right. Trying my best. That's trying right. my best. Yeah. Yes. 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 Just Very like, just her. like, I, I also need to shout out um, to my husband, my husband who is my rock, my strength, my all. He is excellent. Um, you know, the thing is, I, I always tell people, I got married on Saturday. And we flew to Dominican Republic on Sunday. Yeah. So, and then he came back home. So I always say to people, you know, for the first eight years of my marriage, we were like fly in the night because he'd come up every month or every other month. And then when I would come, I would come home in between. And while I was in, from there, I was in Florida. So at the beginning of our marriage, I have a, a and I tell this to everybody, I have a letter that somebody gave him and said they didn't give us three months of marriage. But I said, Lam, thank you very much, because right now we have 29 years of marriage. <laughs> wonderful, wonderful. Yeah. So Consecutive? Pardon? Consecutive years? Yes. <laughs> yes, yes. No break in between. What is, what is his name? His name is Charles John Frederick Lowe's. <laughs> Where's he from? He's actually here from Nassau. His yeah. mom was from um, Cambridge, from Cambridge Villas. In, oh, yeah. In, um, in Eleuthera. In Eleuthera. Okay. And his father is the Knowles out of um, Long Island. Okay. But the yeah. rich Knowles out of Long Island. I well, mean, you yeah. need to, yeah, you need to, <laughs> I, I don't know, I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, but he's, 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 he's really good. He's, he's retired, but consulting with, um, um, consulting with Commonwealth Bank. Okay. Yeah, in IIT. You know, every good thing must come to an end. Spence would say we're not out of product, we just out of time. Yeah. Um, we gotta wind it down now um, for the news that comes on at one o'clock. Okay. Closing comments, um, Doc, to Wallace. Um, it's been a pleasure to be here, to have be in conversation, to be able to impart knowledge, and certainly to encourage the Bahamian public. Um, as I've said before, it is so important to have a comprehensive eye examination. Your eyes are a gift. You've been given the precious gift of sight. Yes. The preservation of them is what's most important. We can't replace them. It is important for us to preserve them. And it is important that that's done on a regular basis, and that regular basis it, it's at least once a year. Once you have a relationship with your eye care provider, they will advise you if you need to see them more often than that. I found an eye care provider today. Uh, I'm sure I need the services of Mrs. Penn. <laughs> uh, uh, with, with four children. Uh, my, ba my baby, I think, must be 34 or 35. Uh, I, I <laughs> <laughs> but I, I, I'm quite sure um, persons, again, give the phone number if persons want to make an appointment to see you. Um, the telephone contact at Family Eye Care Center is 322-3393. That's 322-3393. The 
Email address is Family Eye Care Center. That's F A M I L Y E Y E C A R E C E N T R E at gmail.com. And the cell number is 424 3937. Thank you. I'm going to ask Dr. Pen, uh, you know, the certificate would say pen, mm-hmm. uh, but the marriage certificate say something else. Absolutely, pen knows. Pen knows. Yes. Pen knows. Closing comments. Closing comments. So first of all, I want to say thank you for having me. Um, and for persons who are out there who are, who is looking for a really good physician when it comes to reproductive health, to let you know that Clinic Care Center, like I said, is located on Marathon Road. Um, you don't need to, to struggle. Don't wait until you are what we call advanced age at the age of 35 and just starting out um, trying to, to investigate. But if you're a couple and you need a good physician with good understanding of reproductive medicine, then we welcome you at Clinic Care Center. Wow. I got a Brenda, Ms. Brenda Carey on the line. Good afternoon, Ms. Carey. Welcome to Direct Talk. Good afternoon, sir. I like to say hi to my cousin, um, Dr. Wallace. <laughs> hi, Brenda. How are you? I'm good. I'm calling from Tom Bay's cousin. Hey. <laughs> Shout out to my Top Bay family. That's right. The All Bacardi. my Luther family. Yeah, the Bacardi's. Uh-huh. Ha- yeah, I'm happy to see you on TV. Oh. And also, you're my doctor. I'm, and I'm, I'm happy to be your Dr. Brenda. It's yes. my pleasure to take care of you. Okay, thank you very much for all your help. Thank you so much. You're, oh. you're most welcome. Okay, thank you. Okay, thank take you. care. Any, any other shout-outs before we leave? I think he's in the king. Oh, I got, oh, I got a, two, another kid called as, as Munnings. Ms. Munnings, good afternoon. Welcome to Direct Talk. Hello, good morning. Or good afternoon. I just wanted to, I am enjoying your show, Doc, um, David G. And I just wanted to say hi to my Dr. Kendall. This is Shereen running. <laughs> I'm a patient who has twins. <laughs> I'm well over the age of 35, might I say. But if it wasn't for you, Dr. Kendall, trust me, you could call Dr. Kendall midnight, 1.30 a.m., she doesn't care. She answers that phone, and she would have you. Co- she had me come straight in, and when I came in, she was the one because I I had an accident. I was like, oh my goodness, and my babies were still there, and she handled it like a pro. So mm-hmm. I encourage whoever is out there. She is the best person who will listen, who cares, who understands, who knows what she's doing, and is there for you from the start the finish and it's still there for me today and my twins are four. Wow. So I thank you. Thank you, Sheree. I really appreciate that. Yes. And you know, and you're special to us. <laughs> <laughs> thank you. Bye. I, I didn't ask for persons to call in because I figured it's something very private that they would want. So I figured they would, that's why I wanted you to give you a number. Mm-hmm. But I was happy she called in. Yeah. Absolutely. That's a wonderful yeah. testimony. That's a wonderful yeah. testimony. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. Yeah, yeah Sheree is one of those really special patients you know all of my patients are special in their own way um but some of them there she like she said she was there from i was there from the beginning and four years later she was like, we still have that relationship that's wonderful i don't know i was trying to get her to go again Mm. I want to thank you both for joining in today. Um, we are the new dreamers of this capital city of Nassau in the field of medicine. I wish you all the best as you continue to develop your career um, and continue to serve the Bahamian people. Um, because uh, what we do here is we try to spread a good message of the services uh, that is available in this, in this country that people might not be sure of where they could go to get it. And so for you who go to the family island, the family island could come to you. <laughs> family island can come to me. They can come to I, you. I, I, well, initially, I used to go to Abaco. 
okay. with Dr. Char to Dr. Charities in, at Integrated Medicine um, Medical Center yeah, and the down Charity. there. Yeah, Dr. Yeah. Charity is a good guy. Yeah. Um, and he's also he also comes and see his patients that are in Nassau here at the office at Clinic Care as okay. well. So also shout out to Dr. Charity and his team down in Abaco. So, um, yeah, so I would go to Apico every so often if he have reproductive patients that he need me to assist with. I want to send a special shout-out to the taxi drivers in Freeport, Grand Bahama. I'm going to see them when I land. Didn't realize two of them are doctors. They practice in medicine. All Tell right. me their prescription they could give for, for men to help them along. I said, I didn't know y'all were doctors. <laughs> I want to send a special shout-out to Malcolm Pinder and Willie Pinder in Bimini. Got to remember Miss Willamie Sawyer and Sue Duncan. Got to remember Martha and Kayleen Wish. And send a prayerful shout-out to Purcell and his wife, Philly, uh, and their daughter, Patina. And then I got to send a shout-out to Mrs. Frank, Mr. Frank and Mrs. Merrill Hinsey. Um, and Miss Beatrice Thompson down there in beautiful Bimini. Huh? Pastor Dexter Roll. Can I send a shout out unless I remember him? This show today. <clears throat> we'll see you tomorrow uh, in Freeport, Grand Bahama. It's brought to you by Bahamas Air. We don't just fly here, we live here. By Sankey Products and by the Cancer Treatment Center of America. Thanks to those persons in Master Control, those persons who produce the show here in Freeport, Portia Fernanda and Cindy Smith, and my boy Sean the Dapper. I'm going to be in Grand Bahama tomorrow. People from the Turks and Caicos say, I'm going back home. Hey. <laughs> the director. That's your roots. That's the Turks and Caicos Islands. Surely is. You use a pen, you from the Turks, Turks. and Caicos right. Islands. I'm your host here with director David G. Influenza, or the flu as it is commonly called, is a viral illness that usually occurs between the months October to March. The virus is transmitted from person to person through coughing, sneezing, or talking. Symptoms include fever, cough, headache, runny nose, generalized body aches, and fatigue. There is no specific treatment for the flu, and the symptoms usually dissipate after three to seven days. Because it is caused by a virus, antibiotics are not used to treat the flu. Persons are encouraged to rest and drink lots of fluids. Panadol is recommended for fever and body aches associated with the flu. However, aspirin should be avoided due to the risk of bleeding. To decrease the spread of flu, persons are encouraged to get their flu shot annually and practice good cough hygiene. Additional information